You know, I think I just want to say one thing that when you meet women like this and at every entrepreneur, women entrepreneurship event, you know, as a non-entrepreneur who only writes on entrepreneurship, doesn't actually go ahead and build companies, one always feels a little inadequate and underconfident around women like these who've, as, as Mr. Batras has gone and walked the talk. I think I'm many, many years away from walking the talk, but at least I can write about you. And uh, the thing is that, you know, we feel and in the, this happens a lot in a Delhi, Bombay, and Bangalore, that you meet amazing women entrepreneurs who are doing fantastic things. And you feel that reality mirrors this, that you know more and more there are women like this. And, and I think the first set of questions that Avani has given us, I'd like to address to them. That you know, as women entrepreneurs, do you feel, are there any perceived or actual barriers that you felt? Because let's be honest, you know, I think with the sort of educational background that you guys have come from, and with the experiences that you've had, do you, are you conscious of being a woman entrepreneur and have you felt any obstacles in being so? Personally speaking and uh, in terms of my family, both my parents' side as well as my husband's side, I've never felt that I'm a woman and I have to think differently. And uh, for that I'm very thankful uh, to my uh, family setup. But when I do uh, look at the environment, I don't think there are as such any roadblocks, but there will be instances which will make you think that they are treating me differently. So I think, I'm not sure whether the question is asked as uh, aggressively in, uh, you know, countries like US or Israel, where there are many more women entrepreneurs uh, than in India. But I think you just have to take it in stride, tell those people to go to hell and just, you know, continue to believe that you know, you are an equal citizen in this country and in this world, and you're here to make an impact. And you have to do whatever you need to do for that. Yes, Anu. I think in most cases, uh, once you are that obsessed about something, you don't even probably notice the differences, <laughs> all right? So I think that also makes a difference. So there, maybe there are certain cases where you watch people when they're trying to talk to you, they're trying to avoid looking at you directly. Uh, but other than that, I think I've not had Personally, I've not had too many obstacles, but I think there are challenges when you look at it for a lot of people, they, they haven't had the choice to be able to be able to do things that I've been able to do. And I think there are real barriers, there are real obstacles for most women where they don't have access to finance, they don't have access to uh, even being able to go out, they're not independent financially, they have to take permission for everything. I think there are many, many real barri barriers. And I think those are the things that we need to address. That's, that's a good point. I think we need to, sometimes we push for that ambition. But much I want to bring you in because Upasna mentioned that point about venture capitalists asking her when she was going to start a family. Women get that question a lot, even in interviews when they go for jobs, right? Tell us, you know, how you think, because you've really been at the forefront of venture capitalist industry. In the last 20 years, you would have spoken to a lot of the active angel investors and VCs. Have you seen a change in attitude? And do you f see these deep-seated biases even now? The entrepreneurial ventures like Anu and Upasana have created, I think that's a small sliver. So I do want to sort of expand the definition of entrepreneurship beyond just those that are angel stroke venture capital ready. So I would, I would give a lot of credence and a lot of value and a lot of uh, focus also on those which are small entrepreneurial ventures in first, second, third tier towns. And, it, and it's breeding all over, actually. Women are at the forefront, but I think this is beyond just women, and I would like to bring that in, number one. N therefore, there are clearly financing, and just because you've asked me on the financing point, I think there are clearly two, two or three kind of financing needs that entrepreneurial ventures have, which we have seen. One, the easy one, because I'm in that space, are really the angel stroke VC, exactly like MobiQuip and Map My Genome. I think these are ventures that do look for risk capital, and the investors are very different. Okay. Um, I, I've sat at enough investor tables, I've invested in companies, and I, and I think when we look at, a, look at a company, I really, really must make this point. We do not see whether that's a, is it a lady promoter or a man promoter. I think it's the person. Can he or she be the best person to drive this venture to the next level and to create that large global footprint, billion dollar valuation company? I, I probably am saying something which is uh, not the right thing to say, but many, many, many women in our country do not have assets in their own name. Absolutely. 
okay? And when they do not have assets in their own name, they have a real problem. They have three problems. They're not ready for, they, they don't fit the angel of VC uh, criterion, number one. Number two, they do not have assets, so they are not financially independent to say, okay, I can put in my money and create this venture. And number three, because they do not have assets in their name, they can't go to a bank and raise collateralized funding. And that is the class of people or women who I think are really getting impacted. That's my view. If you look at Con Ferry's latest report, they've actually said that women entrepreneurs have created, uh, their performance levels are five times that of men. And that's because they have tolerance ambiguity. They can deal with concepts. They can deal with ambiguity. And one big example, if you look at the entrepreneur ecosystem in India, if you look at Thai, if you look at NASCOM 10,000 startups, if you look at women entrepreneurship, we, who are running them? They're women. These are very conceptual, ambiguous, networking kind of ecosystem place. So they have tolerance for ambiguity, and they can create something out of nothing. I mean, I'm proud to be able to say that. Number one. Number two, I think they have an emotional level. I mean, just being women, we do have an emotional sensitivity, and we can drive teams in a very emotional way. Now, what is that opportunity? Yes, as a promoter, it's very good. But even more than promoters, if we can bring women to work in startups alongside men, Okay, we have a much more holistic team and, and man, you know, key management roles and driving can happen. I think that's the second point I think I'd like to bring. And the third, I think women have an ability to see things which men don't. You know, just as men, and, and I'm being very sexist in this comment, so pardon me, but just to, just to sort of uh, uh, define, uh, you know, give expression to what I'm saying, I think we can see the dots where they aren't and connect them. The men can see the numbers we, which we may not be able to see. And that's a very complementary strength that we have. And in some ways, if we can harness that, I think we could do a very different. Uh, thank thing. you very much. I'd just like to uh, ask Upasana and Anu, do you think our education system, because that's also something that we need to start building uh, capacity for women or you know entrepreneurship education at a much younger age so that you know we have more successful productive entrepreneurs that's grow old. I firmly believe that the challenge with the government and with all of us um, you know who are aspiring to see uh, more women entrepreneurs is not really about the lack of education it's about the lack of the right kind of education the challenge is not about educating girls anymore the challenge is about educating, articulate, independent, confident, enterprising, enthusiastic young women for tomorrow's India. I think that really is a very big problem. And I think one of the most important things to do is to start a structured mechanism where we can say that we are going to mentor a million women and get the government and the industry forums like this media houses like this one, industry forums like NASCOM, etc., to come in and contribute and to make sure that you have a structured change in the curriculum that happens in the school. I think that really uh, will make sure that we have more uh, girls coming out of schools ready to face uh, the challenges of the world. No, actually, I think very interesting that you said that because I think year before was the first time when the number of graduates in higher education, first time then that number, women breached the number. There were actually more women higher education graduates than men, but economic participation has fallen. So that's, that's almost dichotomous. You would imagine that it would go up.